Hello, I'm Grim Grindle, and welcome back to Build Request. This request comes from Great Equase, and probably quite a few other people. I can't actually search for it because the YouTube search system for comments is so bad that if I type in the name of this particular vehicle, it brings up pretty much every comment I've ever received. But either way, this request is for the Star Wars Imperial AT-AT. And before anyone complains about it in the comments, I know that some of you call it an at at but I refuse to do so, both because it sounds dumb, and because in Star Wars Shadows of the Empire they clearly call it an at at not an at at and if Luke Skywalker himself called it that, then that is what it's called. Try using your harpoon and tow cables on the at at I started wanting to make this vehicle pretty much the exact moment I finished making the Scarab, because like the Scarab, it has the issue of difficulty to the build because it has four legs. But having now built a four-legged walker before, I figured that now, with the build mechanism still fresh in my mind, was the perfect moment to start. And as you can probably tell, I really am building rather swiftly off of what I learned from that first build. Unlike the Scarab where I was referring largely to Grip's turtle mech, in this build, I'm pretty much immediately starting from the same walker mechanism design I built for the Scarab. So straight away it's already very narrow and compact to the body, which is even more important for the AT-AT than it was for the Scarab, because it is a more narrow vehicle, and because of that I was able to, in this build, spend a lot more time trying to get the aesthetics right, rather than fluffing about with the legs. However, beyond the mere aesthetics, there was one other piece of functionality I really wanted to get right, namely that of the head. The AT-AT has this sort of little swivel to its head movements, and it's kind of important because it's the way it aims its two main blasters, otherwise it would have to do a weird little shuffle in order to do so. And if you're doing a weird little shuffle to aim, you're never going to hit those rebellion shield generators. Fortunately, this didn't turn out to be too difficult to do. It's essentially using the same method as a simple turret, except with a lot more restrictive movement. It can only kind of look a little bit left and right, not because it would be impossible to make it look in all 360 degrees, but because that's what the Imperial at has. I then also moved the pilot seat to this front little head cannon area, not because it was necessary to make the vehicle work better, but because that's where the cockpit is so it's slightly more accurate to the actual at I'm replicating, and also, more importantly, it means I can do this cool POV view. It's pretty cool because you do actually get a cockpit POV shot in the Empire Strikes Back, and it's just fun being able to replicate that in-game now. Beyond those two points of functionality, the build was rather simple. There was a quite a bit of grappling with the part limit, as it always is for these larger builds, and there were a few weight issues. I actually ironically made the walker walk too well, and so had to weight down the legs rather significantly because an at running looks cartoonish, but once that was all sorted and painted white, it very much looks the part, and is quite possibly one of the coolest looking, pun intended, Hoth is rather cold, and most accurate Star Wars replica vehicles I've built to date. It's just a shame that you can't use tow bars in multiplayer, otherwise it would be good fun to put my Imperial Walker up against my Rebel Speeder. If you choose to build the vehicle in your own save, which you'll have a chance to do in a moment, because as always what will follow now is a layer by layer, do make sure that you actually manually select the button layout before you use it, because if you don't, when you try to fire the forward-facing cannons, if you've not reassigned all the buttons, it also causes the freezes I put in the back to extend the part limit to fire, which just ends up nailing the vehicle in the back of the head. It looks really comical and is rather funny, so much so that I chose not to fix it, because it's just too good. But regardless, there you have it, a Star Wars Imperial AT-AT built in Banjo-Kazooie nuts and bolts. Until next time, thanks for watching, I have been and still am Grim Grindle. If you would like to follow me on social media, links to my Twitter and the channel Grim and Grim Discord, the Echo Chamber, are in the description below.